Hi, moms and dads. Welcome back to Parenting from Z to A. I'm glad to have you join me as we discuss learning by doing. My very capable son has never been a stellar speller. However, put him in front of a Scrabble board and he is a master. How does he do it? Not with a great command of Webster's Dictionary, that's for sure. Instead, he has learned to finesse the board to make the best use of the doubles and the triple word squares, linking words to go up and down and across simultaneously, and maximizing his points with little three-letter words, while I show off my talents using my huge vocabulary. He beats me every time. My brothers and I used to go bowling on Saturday afternoons. I was known for my great curved gutter balls, Michael for his slow but steady shots between his legs, and Danny for his power ball. Now, Danny had absolutely no bowling technique whatsoever. <laughs> he didn't have a particular place to position himself, a consistent swing of the ball. He didn't even use the same ball each turn. He would simply grab a ball and throw. His throw was so powerful that the bowling pins trembled in fright. Personally, I think they threw themselves to the ground in surrender before the ball ever met the pins. <laughs> what do these two stories have in common? They are both examples of how these special men in my life were successful in their endeavors, despite their lack of knowledge or skill. They simply found a way to overcome their limitations and succeed anyway. Now, will my son ever be the national spelling bee champ? Will my brother ever make it on tour as a professional bowler? Absolutely not. But who cares? They are realistic enough to know that they are not heading for greatness in the world of spelling or bowling. But for their purposes, they have found their own unique way to succeed. When our dad tried to instruct us, bowling became tedious and lost its fun. In fact, there were times we were actually scolded for not doing it the right way. Now, I'm sure he was falling into the parenting trap of trying to teach us the proper techniques and strategies of bowling, or thinking his money was being wasted on gutter balls and poor technique. As parents, we sometimes lose sight of the goal of an activity in order to be the instructor. But here's where it's important to learn to focus on the purpose of an activity, not necessarily the way we would do it. In the case of bowling, without proper instruction, we were doing what we had come to the bowling alley to do. Have fun. Have you seen kids type nowadays? No more do they type by the way we were taught. They develop a hunt and peck system all their own. I found in trying to teach Alex to type the right way, I actually slowed him down. Now I could have forced him to do it my way, but ultimately, what was the point? He had found his own way to succeed. And as long as he was meeting the ultimate goal of being able to type quickly and accurately, who was I to say he was wrong? There's a fine balance between wanting our children to do well versus allowing them freedom to discover their own methods. It is also ultimately important to not squelch their interest in something in the name of doing it right. I have seen children's enjoyment of planking the keys of a piano turned into dread forced practice sessions sprinkled with yelling and consequences for resistance. I have watched children's love of reading turn into disdain as they are encouraged to read only acceptable material and lose their beloved books that are not educational in nature. Here's my advice. Teach children, sure. But in doing so, be careful not to stifle their interest, enthusiasm, and enjoyment. If they are having a good time and or are being successful in their own way and don't need to become professional bowlers, spellers, pianists, 
typists or musicians, let them be. Allow their interests to expand as they follow their own interests and passions. If the keyboard plunker wants to learn more, then pursue it. If the bowler wants to join a team, let her. If the reader wants to go to the library, take him and let him choose books that are of interest to him. And if your child is having fun, sit back and relax. If he's enjoying himself as his bowling ball falls in the gutter, there's really no need for instruction. And if she gets a 60 point word with three Scrabble letters, you may want to take some tips from her. Until next time, think about how you can allow your children to do their own thing while balancing that with the need to teach the right thing. Remember to nurture your caring connection. Consider the goals of your children's activities and allow them to find their own unique way to succeed. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it or learned something new, please hit the like button and share with a friend. It really helps out the channel. For more videos and tips for parenting toddlers, teens, and in-betweens, be sure to check out our other content and consider becoming a subscriber and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified of our videos. For affirmations, announcements, and conversations to have with your kids, follow me on Twitter at ParentingZ to A. And if you'd like to join a community of supportive parents looking to be their best just like you, come and join our Facebook community. Link in the description below. I'm Dr. Vicki. Until next time, enjoy your kids.